Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung, and welcome to your friendly proctologist. I'd like to make an announcement. We've now passed 10,000 subscribers. That is insane. Did you have any idea that there were as many bottom end sufferers as there are in the world? With this, I promise to continue the mission of bringing you real helpful and useful information. I want all of us bottom and end sufferers, myself included, to get together, share our stories, and help relate. Okay, so today's video is about the lateral internal sphincterotomy, or LIS, for anal fissures, okay? And so let's first break down the words of that before we go to the computer screen and I make some third grade scribble drawings, okay? Lateral means to the side, so usually it's on the left side of your anus. The la lateral internal, <laughs> internal meaning the internal sphincter muscle of our anus. That's opposed to the external sphincter muscle. We never do the surgery on the external anal sphincter muscle. Sphincterotomy, meaning we're atomizing otomy of the sphincter. And that means to open up. Okay, what the surgeon is exactly doing is actually cutting the muscle fibers of the internal sphincter. So like I said before, it's a permanent change. And a permanent change always comes with potential risks or side effects. And the one thing that we want to be sure we discuss with our surgeon is the possibility of fecal incontinence, okay? In other words, poop or gas leaks out of your bottom end without your control, okay? And we're not just talking about the risk immediately after surgery, there's risk until the day that we die. When we get older, our muscles and tissues get weaker. So could this surgery show up with side effects later in life? Potentially, okay? So it's a very important that you discuss the pros and cons with your surgeon. At this point, let's turn to the computer screen and let's get to learning. Okay, so we're at the computer screen. Let me identify some of the anatomy here, okay? And we wanna draw things as if I cut your body in half. So first thing I'm drawing here is the rectum. The anus is connected to the rectum and I'm making extra long, way longer than it is in real life because of the fact that that's what the surgery deals with. And we wanna make our drawing as clear as possible. So now we have the buttock skin here, which is connected to our anus. Next, we need to draw the sphincter muscles. And there's two of them, like I said. There is an internal one, and there is an external muscle here, okay? And I'm gonna mark them I for internal, E for external. There's one distinction here that I want to make clear, which is that the internal is shorter and it starts inside of our bottom end. The external one is usually the one that you can feel from the outside. Now, where is the anal fissure? Well, let me draw that in red for you here. It is lined up with the internal sphincter muscle. And note, that is not a coincidence. That is important to know because the internal sphincter muscle is the reason for the chronic fissures not healing. It squeezes so tight, 360 degrees, and let me draw the internal sphincter on the other side too so to illustrate that. It squeezes so dang tight around this fissure cut that it's not able to get the blood flow it needs. It blocks it, squeezes the life out of it, and therefore this guy has trouble healing. So when we get the patient to surgery that has agreed to this procedure, we make an incision towards the outside of our anus, right about here, okay? okay? What happens next is actually we do the procedure to find where the internal and external sphincter are right next to each other and we go in between them. There's a space here that we can do surgery. Then what we do is we cut the internal muscle. How much do we cut? Excellent question. We usually cut 
to the length, the same length of the anal fissure cut here. So you see that this line I've drawn is where the surgeon will stop cutting and all of this will disappear, okay? So after the surgery is done, what does it look like, Dr. Chung? Well, let me draw it on the other side for you. So we have the external sphincter here. Okay, internal sphincter here, but after we cut this, what does it look like? Well, let me get my eraser because we're essentially erasing this portion of the muscle. So we delete this, and when everything, he oh gosh, it's taking a while. When everything is deleted and healed up, we have this situation here, okay? And with this surgery, we the goal, of course, is to heal the fissure, and that's why the fissure is gone. So you can see that with this portion of sphincter missing here, I'm trying to draw it in dashed lines, the sphincter has been permanently changed. And this is where the potential complication of incontinence may come in, because the internal sphincter actually is responsible for most of the strength in our anus muscles. So I hope that drawing was very helpful for you. Just a few comments on my perspective of this surgery. It's very well proven in research that it works, but my critique of this surgery is that recurrence of these fissures is common, about 10 to 20 percent in my opinion, okay? And the research is all over the place there's not a true number what that tells me then is that surgery is not the right answer for many people okay and when they get their recurrence and they come into my office because it's happened before say dr chung we went to the surgery why do i have another cut again why is this happening again we went through a tough surgery of the anus uh, recovery why and i don't have an answer that's one of the things that makes it so difficult for me to have this conversation and for that reason again is why i have not done this surgery procedure since about 2017 2018 and i find that talking to the person going over your life in detail and the habits around your pooping and your eating is by far more helpful and the need to do the surgery goes to zero in my opinion. I've healed fissures that were there for over a year. And the knowledge that the patient has, the strength to be able to get their quality of life back and to get these things to heal over and over again is by far more powerful and much more helpful than doing a surgery. And so thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. Again, 10,000 subscribers is crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And let's continue learning together. Bye-bye.